I've got a barbershop theory. Overtones is to many musicians an abstract concept, and yet it's still something barbershoppers talk about and focus on when singing and listening to barbershop harmony. In previous episodes, we've looked at the overtone series, which shows us how overtones naturally occur when we sing. But it's still incredibly complicated to explain and show exactly what overtones does to our voice and our sound. Many of you have probably heard this crazy overtone from a performance by the Vagrants. That last B5 is actually an overtone and is not sung directly by any of the singers. It is, however, a result of very good vocal production creating this overtone. In this episode, I will try to explain how overtones work and give you a visual representation of the different overtones in a variety of registers. I'll be using Boccia Vista to do a spectral analysis of my voice. The strength of an overtone is shown in color, ranging from dark blue to red. Let's begin by listening to this note. Even though I'm only singing one note, in this case a B-flat 2, what we're hearing is not just the B-flat, but in fact a cascade of harmonics or overtones created by our vocal folds. The note that I'm singing is called the fundamental, which is a term used to describe the lowest note. From here, a bunch of overtones are heard. These overtones are present when we sing, but they aren't as powerful as the fundamental and they aren't equally present. All sound waves and vibrations are accompanied by additional waves vibrating faster than the fundamental. These waves vibrate harmoniously and in integral sections and in different ratios according to the fundamental frequency, each overtone vibrating faster than the one before it. If we look at this figure, the fundamental is set to 1. The first overtone has a ratio of a half, the second a third, etc. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. Imagine a guitar string, if you will. The twelfth fret is placed exactly in the middle of the string, and that note will be an octave above the fundamental, the open string. Let's use a tone generator to replicate the first 16 harmonics or overtones using a 100 Hz sine wave as our vantage point. For each overtone we add 100 Hz to the equation. As we add the different overtones it kind of sounds like we're building a chord. However, when we have all 16 harmonics or overtones playing at the same time, it still sounds like one note. This is because we're so used to always hearing multiple overtones alongside the fundamental. And what's even more interesting is that without these overtones, we wouldn't be able to understand each other, because all we would hear would be sine waves. Now, let's go back to our bass note to see if the same overtones are present in my voice. As we can see, most of the harmonics from the overtone series are present. Notice how difficult it is to tell which vowel I'm singing if we remove some of the overtones. Let's look at the other four parts of this chord to see if they also have the same overtones.
Obviously, the frequencies between the four voice parts are different, but the relationship between the overtones of each singer is the same. They all follow the same principles of the overtone series. So what happens when we measure the overtones of four singers singing together? Some overtones are strengthened by the other singers. An example of this is the bass and tenor. In this example, there's an octave between them, meaning that they produce exactly the same overtones, only an octave apart. In this case, the lead and baritone produce some unwanted frequencies, for instance the major 7th of the chord. This happens because the 5th harmonic or overtone of the baritone is a major 3rd. And if we look at the baritone's fundamental, which is F, we get the note A, which is the major 7th in a B-flat chord. The lead's 3rd harmonic results in the same note, A. If we listen closely to all four voices, we can hear the major 7th as well as the 9th powered by the baritone ringing along. I'm by no means an expert on this topic, but in this next example I've tried to slightly alter the way I'm resonating in both lead and baritone by singing in a darker placement, which produces less overtones. So instead of a bright A ah vowel, I'm aiming for a AH vowel. This made the aforementioned overtone resonating around the note A less powerful. The concept of resonance matching is used by a lot of A-level quartets, and both Scott Kitzmiller and Theo Hicks are wizards in this field. This is certainly an oversimplification of the topic of resonance matching, but maybe that's a topic that we can further explore later on. Now, let's analyze the same chord sung by two different singers, the one being myself and the other being one of the greatest barbershubbers of all time, Tim Warwick. We just so happened to have recorded the same tag, so I thought it would be interesting to make a side-by-side -side comparison of overtones produced by each of us. As we can see, the biggest difference between my overtones and Tim's is that from 1500 Hz and upwards, Tim produces way more overtones and most importantly, the most powerful ones are roots, thirds and fifths. His overtones are also much more focused. He produces more clear yellow overtones and not as many blue shimmering overtones, also called noise, as my voice is producing. This could indicate that Tim's voice is much more resonant and produces way more overtones than I am. It could also mean that Tim is better at aligning and matching his resonance and vowels to create more common overtones between the voice parts. It's no secret that Tim Warwick is a better singer than I am, but I found it very interesting to analyze and try to understand what goes on under the hood when he sings. So to summarize, overtones are a series of harmonics floating on top of the note being sung and they are always present in some shape or form. The overtones are what shapes our timbre and the overall sound of our voices. The more resonant your voice is, the more overtones you produce and each voice part can strengthen the same overtones, creating this expanded sound. As a singer, you can modify your vowels to avoid certain overtones that might be distracting from the sound image. And although this analysis didn't make me a godlike singer like Tim Warwick, it helped explain to me why super talented singers like him sound the way they do. 
I hope you found this video interesting. Make sure to check out all my other barbershop theory videos. See you next time.